Hey guys, it's me, the Metaverse Explorer. Thanks for watching. So this is a guide on the Red Fox Labs Shop Owner's Guide. If you're thinking about bidding for a shop, buying a shop, or even operating a shop, this is the guide for you. I'm going to give you the too long didn't read TLDR, so stay tuned. Okay, let's do it. So the document itself is actually really robust. It talks about, it gives you an introduction, introduction to the Red Fox Vault. It shows you about the NFTs, how to arrange your NFT, how to sell your products, and also about the legalities of it. If you're interested in specific sections of the uh, Vault uh, information, just click on any of these at the moment, and then you'll be able to see. Uh, I did say they'll also be looking at the Mega Moons NFT and your roles and responsibilities as a shop owner. So don't forget, you know, this is uh, a high responsibility item. So if you already know about Red Fox Labs, then you're really familiar with the different ventures that they're doing. The first thing that we want to look at in the abstract is uh, the different industries that Red Fox Labs is aiming for, which is e-commerce, e-media, e-travel, ride-hailing logistics. Um, the rest of the abstract talks about the vault and why there is such a giant need for it. The last sentence I feel in abstract is uh, uh, really good. It uh, kind of encompasses the entire document. Um, so it acts as the all weather, retail and entertainment platform, combining the sale of virtual goods, NFTs, digital collectibles, wearables, and, and physical goods that can be delivered to the customers. So this is uh, directly competing with the industry giants in crypto like OpenSea or uh, any really ETH-based uh, NFT marketplace. Okay, let's move on to the rest of the document. So we start the rest of the document with the disclaimer slide talking about securities and non-investment advice. So of course, this is uh, natural in the crypto sphere. Um, so one thing I do notice that uh, they are incorporated in the British Virgin Islands. So if you are participating in the shop sale, you might want to check your jurisdiction's uh, legalities on buying or owning an NFT. This is very vague nowadays in the crypto sphere. We don't have uh, full, um, full full knowledge about what's happening and everyone doesn't really know. Even the governments themselves don't know how to treat this new asset class. So they talk about past performance. Uh, it's not an indicative of future performance. Um, the uh, warranties, respirations, the jurisdictions, uh, any guarantees that they say you can't disseminate this guide, but it's already online. Anyone can go and read it right now. They talk about general risk of the blockchain, which is general. Everyone quite knows that. And that's it for the um, disclaimer. Let's talk about the vault itself. Okay, so we look at the introduction to the Red Fox vault. So they talk about all shops, assets, and billboards being an NFT, and you can extract value from that. Um, it's going to endeavor to incorporate VR and AR technology and AI at the end of the day. Um, and it will be purely online platform. And later on, it'll be incorporating physical purchases uh, made in the Arfox vault. So they're gonna be tar targeting the Southeast Asian countries first. Moving on, the composition. There are four sections in the Red Fox vault. You have the central hub, Calanova, the gaming quarter, the music quarter, and an open theme quarter that doesn't quite fit in any of the other quarters. So these could be specialty shops. So let's have a look at the central hub. It's the original point for people new to the vault. Um, you can use Skytrains to access three detached quarters. And um, it's going to be the one thing I did notice beneath the hub is the fourth quarter, which makes it extremely unique. And it's the only quarter below the main surface. And they're talking about um, one of these second ones here. So. The Calanova Quarter, which is the art and art themed um, um, section. Now, that being said, just because it is the art themed section, that doesn't mean only art things can go there. It could be a game shop that also sells art, that sort of thing. All these uh, categories are slightly interchangeable. Uh, this is where the Planetarium will be uh, housing uh, exhibitions, as well as the, uh, if you guys remember, they did a recent partnership with a, um, a scientist as well. So. Um, let's talk about the music theme quarter. The music is the inspiration for this quarter. It talks about uh, music and everything music really dedicated to live music, music related performances and concerts. This really links into the Mega Moons NFT, which we'll talk about later and um, how you can get access to standard events. The gaming quarter, of course, is the gaming quarter. Anything related to gaming doesn't have to be strictly gaming. It could be something gaming related. Um, oh, like it says here, <laughs> related to gaming. Um, um, esports tournaments you know live streams of that sort of things and then the open theme quarter which is about entertainment it could be anything special specialty um uh, shops uh there i think this would be the really fun quarter that people might spend a lot of time in simply because it's uh, built to incorporate a racing track a roller coaster and other hidden gems that are sure to satisfy in the most curious adventures so it makes me think what other hidden gems there could be if there's a racing track, that means there's going to be cars. That means there's going to be NFTs, or is it going to be like motorcycles? We don't know yet. 
there's a lot of uh, uh, possibilities for these to turn out. Let's look at the shop auction. So this section, they talk about the Red Fox Bowls shop. It talks about how there's five configurable templates for each of the shops and um, you they come standard. You can choose any of those. If you want to do any of the, any designs outside of the five standard templates, then you will have to source that uh, yourself. You'll have to incur that cost. Um, there is a possibility you might be able to work with the team. I do, they haven't really confirmed that. Um, you can sell the entire shop as is or um, by itself. So you can sell it with all your IP and items inside the shop, or you can sell the shop just without the NFTs inside. The auction itself, there's 120 shops that are going to go, but now they're only selling 25. So the first is 25, it's in the Calanova quarter. It's on the Ethereum network, and that means you'll need ERC20 Red Fox to, to bid for it. The first auction starts at September 14 at 4 p.m. GMT plus seven. It lasts for 72 hours. There will be one shop going on sale every hour and the bidding will start from there. The auction of salt will be at the starting, starting time, 25 uh, shops, uh, and they are at minimum $5 worth of RFOX tokens for the starting bid. Um, and it's only ERC20 RFOX, and they talk about where you can go and buy the RFOX. We don't need to talk about this. You can go to a centralized exchange, decentralized exchange, any ETH, Uniswap, one inch, just um, you, you can get it. You can, there's lots of ways you can find out how to get the RFOX token. Once the shop starts bidding, the bidding process is the same as every other ETH-based NFT on the, um, on the blockchain at the moment. So um, you'll be able to sign a transaction and uh, submit that transaction to the blockchain with paying your gas fee, and that's going to put in your new um, bid for the shop if someone outbids you you will have to put a new bid sign a new transaction with new gas costs that is three percent above the last bidding price so that means there is a potential for someone to keep outbidding you now um, keep in mind gas gas fees are pretty high at the moment so if you do want to bid make sure if you want your transaction to be broadcast really quickly then you'll have to increase your gas fees okay once you receive your shop uh, it's the auction ends. you will have the highest bid you will receive your fox uh your red fox shop within 24 hours some frequently asked questions about the sale. Are you allowed to bid for multiple shops? Yes, you can. What happens to the RFOX tokens after the, uh, you bid during the auction? All bids are locked in an audited smart contract. Most smart contracts are not uh, audited nowadays in uh, Ethereum network. You know, it's a free for all really. So if you're audited, that kind of means something. Um, the RFOX tokens you use for bidding are on hold until the auction ends or someone outbids you. So if someone outbids you, your RFOX tokens are immediately released to you immediately and you can use that as new capital to bid on the next, uh, to place a new bid if you want. So yep, that's what it means. And when I get a bid, will they place a new bid? Yes, there's, if there's time left in the auction, you can submit a new bid, of course and you have to consider ETH gas fees for every new transaction you create. This section talks about the different uh, shops, uh, what they look like on the diagram, which is important for the templates that you're going to receive. So if you want to look for a specific template, a specific shop in a specific location, this is what you need to look at. So you, for example, you're going to see PIX16 is specifically on the right hand side on that and the road leading there is on the right hand side. It's not in the main, um, uh, main walkway. So that being said, we'll move on to the templates okay so these are all the templates if you look at this this is the van arch template and look on the right hand side it's got pix3 so that's the template what it looks like let's go and find where a pix3 would be and this template so that is uh, looks like one of that that's that one and also that one and also that one so i know for pix3 it's at the top on the left hand side of this entire map okay that's the van arch We'll look at the Polo Luna, which is another shop template. Pix10 is an example. We'll look at Spondali, which is Pix06 as an example. Pablara, which is Pix7 as an example. I think this was one of my favorite ones. I'm not sure. I forget right now. Yeah, I think that was my favorite. And then the last one, which is Matisto, which is the Pix08 example. Okay. We'll talk about the shop design. There are different shop designs for each of the shops, okay? So you can personalize this with built-in designs from RFOX Labs. So this is what your shop is going to look like as the NFT, your shop ID, pick 16, your location, the quarter, and the template. Let's go ahead and look at the actual customization. So on the left-hand side, this is uh, some things you can change. You can change the name of your shop, the interior, there's different types, the materials, there's different types of materials, um, and the display type. You can look at the color, what kind of theme you 
you're going for and there is a logo so this is a jpeg you can do it as an svg eps or png or jpeg and of course this is the redbox logo you can put your own logo in there look a look at my inventory these are the current assets you'll have for sale you can 45 and you can manage all these assets individually um, and it shows you how many assets you sold this week looking at the exhibition as well um, you can put in a description you can put in a title um, all this sorts of stuff so the current exhibitions you can have you can see you can have a little diagram of the actual room that you have in the vr metaverse and you can put each individual item where you want them to be so if you've got one specific nft that you want in a central display you could put that right in the middle of the room if your layout allows for that Okay, let's look at the rest of it, which is the list of the artworks where this is a, a much easier interface for you to do it, I think. So you'll be able to click on each artwork and what you want to remove, remove or add or, you know, uh, move it in order. If you want one thing here or one thing there, you can put um, the, so if some, something sells, the next thing will take its place, that sort of idea. So it's, it's actually quite intuitive and really easy to, uh, to use. The Mega Moons NFT. So for the Calanova quarter sale, uh, shop owners only, this is if you get a winning bid and you now own your shop. Um, you will get a Mega Moons NFT. What does this NFT do for you? It, for the font, um, you will receive a Mega Moons NFT and it entitles each person in possession free entry to standard events in the Red Fox Vault for a period of three years. Now, what are standard events? Events are held by or through Red Fox and its affiliates. It's not private events and it's not outside parties or premium events where our Fox are not entitled to any allowances or insurance of tickets. So these are, I think, um, not private parties at all, not uh, like, you know, like if crypto punks want to have their own party and um that they probably won't give any tickets to red fox labs then you won't be able to go if it's a normal concept that's kind of uh um pay to pay to enter then red fox lab will put the mega moons nft will probably give you access uh three years from the opening of the um minimum viable product of the calanova quarter let's look at the roles of the shop owner if you're going to buy a shop you need to know what your roles and duties are this is serious you can't just hold it you know okay so this is where it gets a bit more serious as the operator of a shop so you are um, you have to abide by the full terms and conditions which are not quite out yet they will come soon uh, other legal responsibilities associated with running your business as well so you can't do any shady stuff of course the landlord as a shop owner um, you can rent your shop to a third party or a business if you can't do this yourself then the quartermaster will handle this for you all rental contracts must be submitted through the court quartermasters to ensure they know who these new shop operators are um, they they need to make sure each tenant is aware of the guidelines and not a expose the shop to any risks or issues. Uh, the renter of shop has the responsible for the 2% transaction fees incurred and it is not the shop owner once contracts have been exchanged. So if you're the owner yourself and you run your own shop, you still pay the 2% transaction fees. If the um, there is a new tenant in the shop, then the tenant will be responsible for paying the 2% transaction fees. It's very simple. You can sell your shop if you want. It's going to be an NFT. So you can go to any NFT marketplace that will uh, list it, such as OpenSea or Rarible or whatever, whatever um, if based NFT marketplace you can go to. Um, so there is also the Rfox marketplace, which is in development at the moment. And I assume you will be able to sell your NFT there as well. You can rent your shop out uh, when the uh, Calanova MVP is out and there will be a shop uh, proper um, instructions on how to do this. We'll look at some other frequently asked questions for shop owners. All those speculators out there, what happens if you just sit on the shop that you have and you want to flip it for a profit and you have no intention or even running a shop? Then <clears throat> this is the distinct average of buying the calendar of quarter. You've got three months before the uh, becomes fully operational, in which time you can resell or hold, hold the NFT. So three months but once that three months goes live, you have seven days to ensure your shop is operational. You have to have something in there and you have to be selling stuff. If you're unable to operate your shop yourself or you're not willing to, the quartermaster will find a renter for you and they can rent your premises for you and they'll pay you the, the rent that you've set. Um, and the, the bypass is waiting or watching. You agree, you agree and understand that you one, either run a shop yourself within seven days or um, the quartermasters will find you a tenant. Okay, what are the protocols? are supported by the vault so currently it'll be eth and wax but um, the idea is that they have an aggregation layer that uh, every and every um, blockchain should be compatible fairly soon i don't know if they specifically mean evm chains or um, every chain in general such as solana that doesn't use an evm compatible machine okay 
what if someone next to you has really bad behavior or you know they're, they're making your shop look bad as well um they you their red fox labs does have a kill switch which is like just a visibility switch so no one will be able to even see their shop and then that should stop uh, all the nefarious activities um can you create new collections for the shop or sell your existing collections doesn't matter it's your shop you get to sell what you want so once again, if you can't operate a shop within seven days, the uh, the quartermaster will find a tenant for you. In the unlikely event you can't, um, the Red Fox Labs can and probably will sell your shop NFT at a reasonable value and pass on the proceeds to the address that holds the NFT. So if you're being uncooperative with the Red Fox Vault, then um, they do have the ability and the function on chain to sell your NFT and give you the ETH value. So what if you lose your keys and unfortunately you've lost your keys? This is uh, not your keys, not your coins. So don't forget, if you lose your keys to your crypto wallet, you won't be able to access the vault. The NFT will be gone. The NFT is still there, but you won't be able to access it. And in that case, uh, there might be uh, something that the Red Fox Labs team can do for you. That's not quite clear at the moment. We'll have to wait and see. This is crypto. There are risks, you know, there could be cyber attacks, smurfing, spoofing, consensus based attacks. You know, th there's lots of stuff. If you're not secure, if you even if you have a normal wallet and someone gains access to your wallet, you could lose your shop. Um, such uh, There's also risks associated with the shop NFTs in general, um, such as manipulation of the market, that sort of stuff, and it also extremely volatile. NFT, NFTs are going for a lot nowadays, so you have to be careful and actually assess the value of these NFTs. There's risk of uninsured losses, so if, you're, if you own a shop and you don't actually have insurance on it, that there is no current insurance at the moment on the NFTs that I know of, but there possibly could be a, um, a, a function on this that they can do. Maybe Nexus Mutual might look into this, we don't know. And of course, there is the legal and enforcement uh, risks that you expose yourself to. So if you're in America, they don't seem to like a lot of these NFTs and uh, speculative plays. So um, you have to make sure your jurisdiction is happy for you to own these things. Um, don't get into this if, if you're not sure, you know, this is a, uh, a long time investment, not financial advice. <laughs> One misconception that people don't realize though, um, there is no governance rights to the vault at all if you have an NFT. So because the uh, Fox Vulcan has no government rights, uh, governance rights, the company can and probably will change things at its own discretion because this is their vault. They, uh, you just own the shop. You can operate your own shop, but at the end of the day, they get say on what uh, the giant changes are in the vault. Okay, so I think that's the end of the document. So that's it for now about the shop owner's guide. If you are really interested about uh, owning a shop and NFT of these Genesis quarters, um, the shop does, the, the sales do start in two days and eight hours. So if you have EOS, if you have Fox on the BSE smart chain, you probably want to get that over to the Ethereum smart chain at the moment. Remember, it only accepts ERC20 Rfox. We'll look at the vault map. This is the new map that I saw. So this is what we've been looking at, the red circle. Remember, there are other um, uh, quarters to go on sale as well. So if you miss out on this sale, it's okay. There are other sales as well. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll leave you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope it was informational and uh, there'll be more information coming out later. So thank you very much. I'll see you later.